Hello, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with part two of this multi-part artifacts tutorial called Desecrated Cathedral. Now, if you followed the steps in part one, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. You've got your color corrected building in clouds, you've got your rain layer, and you've also got an adjustments layer with a, an S curve attached to it. Now, I'm just gonna drop that up to the uh, top so it includes the rain in the adjustment. And let's move on. Now in this section, I'm going to show you how to add the flickering glow to the windows and the evil looking halo to the back of the building. So uh, let's get started. First step is to rename this for simplicity. It's our uh, cathedral layer, so we'll just rename it to cathedral. Select it and hit Control and D to duplicate it. And we'll rename this new layer windows. I'm just going to solo this layer so we can see what we're going to do. With the Windows layer selected, take your pen tool, zoom in, and create masks around your windows. Now this is going to be a bit of a rush job, but uh, it's probably worth taking a little bit of time. Um, I'm going to hit the M key to expose the mask properties and just switch that to none so we can see the uh, rest of the layer. And go back and do the other windows. So again, pen tool and just create another mask. Hide that one and move on to the final one. Okay, so I can set them all to add now and zoom out so you can see what I've done. Okay, now because we've duplicated the uh, cathedral layer, it's still got the CC toner value effect on it. Um, so I'm just going to change the blue to a nice spooky orange. And just unsolo it so you can see how that looks. So that's pretty good. But I want to add a glow to it now. So uh, take your Windows layer, hit Control and D again to duplicate the layer and the masks that we've just created. And we'll just rename it to Candle Light. Okay, once again, I'm going to solo the track so we can see what we're doing better. Delete the CC toner effects, we don't need that anymore. In your effects and presets panel, type in CC light burst and drop it on to your candle light layer. And you can see what it does, it takes the luminance values of the, uh, of the image and just creates light rays from that, which is pretty close to what we want. Now we can tweak it just a little bit. If you go to the uh, center value and grab the control point, you can drop that anywhere you like just to reflect how the light is pointing out of the building. I think the best result fairly close here. So that's around the 484 by 293 mark. Now we're going to swap the uh, burst mode from fade to center. And we're going to increase the ray length to about 70. Check the set color button and change it from this strong yellow to a color that's closer to the orange that I picked earlier, just a little bit brighter. And we'll OK that. Now it looks a little bit garish at the moment. We will be fixing that later. So uh, just unsolo that and we'll see how it looks. A little bit overpowering, but that's easily fixed. Right click on the candlelight layer and select blending mode and we'll pick hard light. Next, hit T to bring up the opacity and just drag it down to about 50 just to soften off that and show some of the window detail below. So that's pretty good, looking pretty spooky, but it's a static light and we want it to flicker as though there's uh, some kind of candle or flame light behind it and that's easily achieved. So with the candle light layer selected, twirl down the effects properties until you get the CC light burst, hold down Alt and click on the intensity stopwatch. 
Now we're going to create an expression here, but it's one of the simplest ones in the book. It's called wiggle. So type in wiggle, open bracket, 10, comma, 100, and close bracket. And all that does is it creates a random number, 10 times a second, from a range of 100. In real terms, if I solo that, it takes the intensity, and as you can see here, it just randomizes it and gives it that nice flickering light that we're after. Okay, back to the main composition. That's all looking good. So before I go any further, what I'm going to do is just select the candlelight and the windows layers and just parent them to the cathedral layer because I may be moving the cathedral layer around later on. So uh, with both of those layers selected, click on the pick whip and just drag it onto the cathedral layer. And that basically means that whatever I do with the cathedral layer, the candlelight and the window layers will follow suit. Okay, so that's the window sorted. Now we just need to add a matching evil looking glow around the, uh, the top of the building. And again, that's nice and simple. Right click, select uh, layer styles and outer glow. Twill down the outer glow properties Pick an orange to match your effect, or you can pick any colour you like, depending on uh, what you want to achieve. And increase the size to about 55. Now the final step for this is to take the screen blending mode and change it to linear dodge. Now you can have a whole lot of fun um, playing with the different blending modes because they'll give you all sorts of uh, different effects. I mean, vivid light, for example, gives it that nice harsh mix with the colors behind, but I'm just going to stick with uh, linear dodge for now. Okay, it's all looking good. I think I can probably squeeze one more element in before we uh, stop the clock, and that's a nice vignette. Now, uh, there are all sorts of ways to create a vignette, um, but the way I like to do it is just create a new solid. I'll call it vignette. Make it black. And OK that. With the vignette layer selected, grab the ellipse tool. Drag it until it fills the entire screen to create a mask. Swap the mask value from add to subtract. Twill down the properties, set the feather to something nice and high, I'll make it 130. And then you can play around with the uh, expansion just to give it that uh, nice vignette feeling. So we'll uh, increase the expansion to 57 pixels. And I'm just going to drop that under my adjustment layer and we'll leave it at that. Okay, so we're starting to make some progress now. Um, hope you found it useful. Uh, keep your eyes open for step three. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.